Can I get a witness? Prayer will. Prayer will. Oh, yeah. Takes me. I know that prayer will. In the midnight. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. Let's go to the Word. <clears throat> hey, Cam, adjust that microphone to adjust this microphone to that one. Just like the one that they just finished singing in. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Well, Somebody asked me this morning, had I forgot how to preach? I hadn't preached in so long. I told them I don't know. But one thing I do know is that if I open my mouth, he will speak for me. So there is a word from the Lord. Come on, grab your Bibles. Mark chapter 16. Let's see if we can get through this. I didn't make it through it this morning at the 10 o'clock hour. Let's see if we can make it through it at the 12 o'clock. People are going through so much. I just think this is a fitting word for the house. And when, verse number one, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices that they might come to anoint him very early in the morning on the same day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen they said among themselves get this who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us but when they got there they saw that the stone had been rolled away and it was very, who's going to roll it away? When they got there, this is the rendition of Mary Magdalene and the women, and they are distraught because Jesus has died. They don't think they are going to make it. But it says early in the morning, they went to the tomb. When they got there, the stone had been rolled away. Amen. Do me a favor. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, I got what it takes to be a survivor. I've got what it takes to be a survivor. Amen. <clears throat> it is interesting to me that, y'all bear with me a minute. If y'all help me up the hill, I'll get down by myself. It's interesting to me that most of the time we only hear this story around resurrection or Easter seasons. Uh, give me some top in on this microphone, if you will, Cam. Not, 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 not getting the full revelation of 
God raising Jesus from the dead suggests to us that 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 God is or it suggests to us that we only believe that we need a raising from the dead once a year. If, if only time we look at the resurrection story is when we only, the only time we do it is doing seasonal things, then we believe that there is no need for raising of dead stuff on a daily basis. I believe uh, the truth of the matter is that there are some people sitting in this room that have some dead stuff that you need God to work out for you. I believe there's some folk in this room right now that have some dead stuff that you live with every day. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. You can be sanctified if you want. I'm going to take my time and preach anyhow. Uh, resurrection has to be more than a rehearsed story for Easter Sunday morning in the month of April. Resurrection is, uh, is about the resurrecting power of God. Yeah, when you look at it, then you look at the resurrection power. Resurrection has to be more than a rehearsed story once a year. As a matter of fact, if we don't believe that he has power every day, then everything we've done this morning is dead. We have to believe that he has power yesterday and he has the resurrection power today. It, it, it got to be understood that this resurrection power is, is not some symbolic moment, but rather the fact that the same power that he had to raise Jesus from the dead is the same power that he has to raise your dead situation. Now, whoever you are in the room, you've got to grab hold of this, that resurrection power is about an everyday resurrecting God has the same power that he used to raise Jesus. He got that same power to raise your dead issue. I guess I'm preaching to myself in here this morning uh, because if, if that's the case, so resurrection then, the, the resurrection experience brings us to, uh, to, the, to confront the, the whole God reality that he has uh, he, or that God is omnipotent, meaning he has all power. And if he has all power, because he has all power, then he has dead raising power for your life whoever this is for whoever this is for the resurrection power the resurrection experience uh, brings us to confront the fact oh my god i i got a feeling i got a feeling y'all i got a feeling uh, that, that 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 i'm not the only one who has dead stuff that need God to do something about something that's lying dormant and dead feeling in your life. I got a feeling there are some other folk in the room that have had God to step into dead things. And, and, and listen, if you want to be cute and quiet today, it's okay with me because the stuff that he's done for me won't allow me to sit dormantly by not waving my hand not saying anything because it is the resurrecting power of God that is demonstrated today through the fact that I'm people look at me and thought I was done and then God raised me up all over again is there anybody in here that you don't have to look at your life through the lens of others, but rather you can look at your life through the lens of God who has the power even when it looks dead, he can raise it up all over again. You, you, you know, you know, you know that God, you know that God is working in your life when people look 
at you at point A and then when they came back to point A you had moved from point A they thought point A where they left you was the place that you were going to be dead and die but then when they came back to point A you had got up and moved on I want to share that again when they went to the tomb Jesus was at point A when they left the tomb when they got back to the tomb he had moved on oh y'all ain't got it the, the, your enemy left you at point A and thought you were done and dead but when they came back they looked for you and you had moved on somewhere else as a matter of fact can I just talk in the room somebody is inquiring about you right now and all you are able to declare and say is that I have moved on do, do, do me a favor and encourage them folk around you tell them you got to move on just move on folk gonna believe that it's over for you that I came to give some good revelation the God you serve has so much power that when you were at your lowest point God can step in there and he can move you from point A to point B and folk are gonna be asking what happened and all you are gonna be able to declare is God stepped in and revived a dead situation where are my survivors at in the room? Those whom that people thought you were done and over. Come on with that mask on your face. Holler anyhow and make the devil man tell him I'm a survivor. Oh, I've got to move on here. I, 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 I got this. I got Pastor Artez. It's right here in the text. If y'all don't mind, if you give me just three or four minutes to paint the picture, I'll go to my seat. Here, here it is. I, I want to paint the picture this morning. Jesus has already been to Calvary. He is resting in his grave. And some women decide that they're going to go to the tomb. Listen to this. Early in the morning, Sunday morning in the tomb, and they're going to go to the cemetery where Jesus has been laid after the enemies have killed him, after the enemies have laid him in the tomb after the enemies have demoralized him and caused his death, these women now with Jesus have gone to the dreaded tomb but, 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 but they show up, get this early in the morning let me just put a pen in that Jesus is dead and they go to the tomb Jesus has been crucified but they go to the tomb Jesus has been put in the grave but they go to the tomb here's the question ladies and gentlemen why would you go to the tomb if the man is dead why show up oh God I feel it coming here verses 1 and 2 gives it to us pastor it says that they went there because they have pressing passions. These women are struggling because they love Jesus. He's dead. The future is dead. They are, they are struggling. Their loved one is dead. And their, their survival is in question. But I want to just stop here and declare that, that these women, even though what they thought was dead, um, they went there early in the morning. Oh, what are you saying, preacher? What are you saying? The problem here is uh, these women here, even though he's dead, they kept going. Mm -hmm. uh, these women even though the situation looks dead, they went to the tomb anyhow. Mm -hmm. Y'all slow on that side. Let me help here. Uh, they, they, it, 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 he's dead, but they go to the tomb, which is symbolic of the fact that no matter what happens, they kept on showing up. Oh, no matter how bad it was, they kept on getting up. Excuse me, I'm sorry that I caught y'all from the backside. Let me just throw this in for free. It doesn't matter what nobody says about you. You ought to be one of those folk that said, come hell or high water, I'm going to still show up. Oh, Lord help me in the room uh, so many times it takes uh, us to have other folk to pump and prime us uh, for us to show up the text here says uh, that they go there they showed up even though he's dead what's the problem then preacher uh, there's a problem in the text there's tension here and I must lift it the tension in the text is uh, the problem I have with this is uh, 
they have come to the tomb to, to take care of a dead body, to prepare a body for final burial. The problem is they came to do a permanent job on something that was temporary. Can, can I teach us for a minute here? You got to be careful uh, that you don't establish permanency where there is temporary situations. Uh, y'all still, let, let me pause in a second and tell somebody in here that's listening. Since y'all ain't going to say nothing, let me talk to, I, I, I feel like I'm preaching again to an empty room. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm preaching to an empty room to YouTube. So let me just preach to YouTube. Since y'all ain't going to say nothing, I'm going to preach to YouTube. They come to embalm the body, which is suggesting that Jesus is over, which is suggesting that life is finished. And I don't know who that's for but God I feel it coming in here I came to turn notice on the enemy the devil is a lie it is not over we are going to survive somebody ought to holler this too shall pass I don't believe y'all getting it in here telling your neighbor tell your neighbor this ain't permanent it's just temporary I don't want to be I don't want to I don't want to be too hard on y'all today but man I've been going through some stuff in life and, and, if, and if, we, if we're not careful we'll make permanent what's only temporary and, and I don't want to be too hard on these women so let me just move on by telling you uh, that even though they went there with permanency in their mind and it was a temporary thing I want you to see something at least they showed up Mm -hmm. uh, put, put this in your notes if you're doing it the level of your deliverance is determined or determines the depth of your dedication or devotion uh, the level of your deliverance, uh, uh, it, it determines uh, the depth of your decisions uh, and the depth of your devotion. The level of your deliverance determines the depth of your, uh, I said all that to say, I said all that to say that the, 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 the reason that, that they show up, you got to understand why they showed up. Uh, this woman, Mary Magdalene, get this, uh, had been delivered of uh, seven demons in her life. She had had seven demons in her life. Uh, and the Bible says that now that she has been delivered, Jesus is dead, but she she still shows up. Rewind. I'm going to talk to y'all right here. She had seven demons and Jesus had delivered her from the demons. And when Jesus delivered her from the demons, when Jesus dies, she still shows up. Y'all slow. Let me get y'all. She had been delivered of seven demons. And when she's delivered of the demons, Jesus dies, but she still shows up. I'm just trying to tell you that any time oh, you get delivered from something, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You will still show a God that you still love him. No matter what you're going through, if you've been delivered, nobody don't have to pump you and nobody don't have to prime you. Nobody don't have to pull you. Nobody don't have to push you. I don't need Kanisha to bring me into worship. I don't need musicians to play along for me to lift my hands. Because God delivered me, I'm going to give him the glory so if nobody if nobody don't say nothing but me I'm in here to tell y'all I have been delivered and whenever God help me you have been delivered by God oh you will give God praise on a whim if somebody just say hallelujah you will make you lose your mind if somebody just begins to give God the glory you will join in with them is there anybody in the house anybody in the house who has been delivered if you've been delivered let's take a few minutes in here and let's just show what delivered folks look like sometime God help me in the room it takes too much for us God for God to pull us into devotion but if God have healed you if God have delivered you if God have pulled you through I think we ought to show signs of devotion in the room look at your neighbor and tell them this is what deliverance looks like 
I can't hear nobody in the room when God have delivered you. You don't have to beg people to lift up their hands. When God, when God, when God have delivered you, you will automatically show up at the church house. If God has delivered you, nobody has to beg you to usher. If God has delivered you, nobody has to beg you to sing. If God has delivered you, nobody had to beg you to wave your hands. I wonder, are there any delivered folks in the house? If you've been delivered, let's show some signs in the room. If God brought you through, how about lifting your hands and giving him the glory? Because the reason why, the reason why I praise him is because he delivered me. This woman had been delivered of seven demons. And now I don't know what you've been delivered from. But whatever it is, the only way I know you've been delivered is you ought to show some signs in the house. Where are my show enough delivered folk? People that been through hell and high water. People that God have brought you back from sickness and trouble. People who have had family issues and trials and tribulation. But God have brought you through. Come on, lift your voice. Tell somebody around you, this is what deliverance looks like. Oh my God, I done fooled around and got happy in the room. When you've been delivered, you don't have to worry about who's going to help you or not. See, I see them people around you. They ain't going to say nothing in this service. So don't worry about them. Get the one behind you and tell them I'm going to shout because I'm delivered. I'm going to jump because I'm delivered. I'm going to run because I'm delivered. These women felt that there had been not been enough done for Jesus. So they thought that I ought to go and give to Jesus what he's given to me. And I want to suggest to somebody in the house that this is a good day to give him the praise. What I like about these women is that Calvary's cross disturbed their faith, but it did not destroy their love. As a matter of fact, they said, you might have killed my Lord, but I love him whether he's here or wherever he is. And which makes me feel like running in the room because even though he's supposed to be dead, I'm going to show up at church and give him the praise. That's why I love y'all that's in the room. Pandemic has had us messed up a long time. But some of y'all said early this morning, I'm going to the house. I might have to wear a mask to give him praise. I might have to holler through my mask. But after all I've been through, ain't no way I'm going to sit down and not give him the glory. All hope is gone, but praise him. All issues are up, but praise him. Sickness is on your life, but praise him. Somebody in here ought to tell your neighbor, I'm a survivor. And I got to give him praise. I got to hurry, so let me close my story. The text of Mark says they came early in the morning. The text of Matthew says they came beginning to get dawn. The text of John writing says they came when it was dark. What I like about it all is that when he came, when they came, uh, stay right there, when they came, Oh, Lord, when they came, it was dark when they showed up. But Jesus could see them in the dark. At their darkest point, Jesus could still see them. Oh, that's a good preaching point right there. When you're at your lowest point, Jesus can peep into your situation. And he can see that your struggle is and still pull you out. I don't understand how in the world that I can serve God the way I do. And the people around me are better off than I am. I can't figure out how that I can give God glory. And he'll promote everybody around me but me. He told me to tell the church. 
it looks dark now but keep on giving him glory because sooner or later he's going to pull you out of your dark place I got to holler like a feel it anybody in here going through a dark spot in your life God said keep on lifting up holy hands because not only am I going to bring you through but while you're in it I know how to bring you out so I can see you in the dark the first point is the pressing passion but the second point is there's a problem in the text what is the problem preacher the problem is that they got a stone in front of the door the stone got a seal on it and there are soldiers guarding the stone they came when it was dark and people are guarding the tomb and it seems like there's no support around cancer survivors can y'all help your boy preach that when there seems like no support won't he do it I said won't he do it anybody in here ever had a time when nobody could help you but you called on the name of the Lord won't he bring you out the lesson is no matter what's happening keep on pushing forward your neighbor didn't get it so tell him again tell him keep moving forward I need you to keep on moving forward maybe God is telling you in this hour you don't need your cousin you don't need your spouse you don't need your husband you don't need your wife to get to where I'm carrying you I need you to lean and depend on me in the midnight hour won't he bring you through where are my survivors at anybody had to call him at night time won't he bring you through tell your neighbor keep moving forward I said tell your doggone neighbor tell somebody keep going forward maybe God is telling you you pinning on the wrong people some of you your life has stopped because you're depending on the wrong people these women show up and they don't have a support system and when they get to the tomb they say who's going to move the stone yeah I came to tell the church never allow your experience to shape your expectation yeah your neighbor has given up I think y'all slow I said your neighbor has given up tell them I need you to keep moving forward I said tell your neighbor I need you to keep moving forward uh -uh, uh -uh. I need you to tell your neighbor I need you to keep moving forward you have allowed your experience to erase your expectation my experience has not erased my expectation I'm still looking for a miracle I've been through trouble but I still I'm waiting on my breakthrough yeah God I said I'm going through hell but I still believe he gonna bring me out can I preach like I feel it so the Bible then declares as I get ready to go eat me a snow cone that he's expecting a miracle why put your clothes on and get out of your bed if you're not going to look for a miracle I came to 10th Street looking for God to work a miracle I need him to do something spectacular so I came looking for a miracle some people around you don't need no miracle they don't need what you need out of God so I need you to act like you need a miracle where are my miracle expectors in the house wave your hand and say I'm looking for a miracle I gotta shout because I'm on a miracle I gotta run because I'm on a miracle can I go a little bit higher 
finally in the room after you get through your passion and after you get through your problem when you get to your problem he says I got providential proof providential means pro means video pro means before video means I see which means he sees it before you got there because the Bible says when they got to the tomb that the stone was already gone can I preach like I feel it when you get to your next place what you thought was going to be a problem God done already moved it out God done already turned it around and I came to tell the church that we got to shout toward our blessing way toward our blessing give God glory towards our blessing is there anybody in the room that's looking for a miracle act like you're looking for a miracle wave like you're looking for a miracle shout like you're looking for a miracle give God praise like you're looking for a miracle say hallelujah Okay, let, let, let me throw this in. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Let me throw this in for free. Tell somebody around you I'm looking for a miracle. Uh-uh, see, you got to get this in your spirit. Listen, if you don't get this, you'll leave here without what you need. Tell your neighbor I'm looking for a miracle. See, when you show up and the stone is there, you got to show up there expecting that God has already moved it. You got to show up at the issue to believe in that the issue is already fixed. Y'all ain't got it. You got to show up there believing that it's already done. When you get to work tomorrow, I need you to get it right today. When you get to work tomorrow, it's going to already be fixed. When you get back home today, it's going to already be done. Where are my believers at? Somebody holler, I'm looking for... Is that all you got? I said, somebody holler, I'm looking for a miracle. Woo. I'm looking for a miracle. You got trouble at home. When you get home, it's going to already be fixed. When you get to work, it's fixed. When you get to your family, it's fixed. When you get to the doctor, it's fixed. Somebody say, miracle. I'm done. <laughs> see, see, for you to come to church and don't come looking for the miracle, you have missed the whole moment. I came in here looking for God to move and send me what I need for the next portion of my life. Are y'all getting it? Now, let, let me show you the miracle. Let me show you. Let me show you. Y'all got, y don't sit down. I'm done. Check this out. Remember that he sent the angels to move the stone. But he sent Jesus to raise his son. Rewind. He sent God, but see, let me say it again. He sent the angels to move the stone. But he went himself to raise Jesus. He sent the angels to move the stone. But he himself came to raise Jesus, which suggests that there's some things that the angels can't do. There's some stuff that this is going to call for God to step in. God told me to tell you, he told the angels last night, nope, this is a job for me. And I'm getting ready to turn my baby's life around. Where are y'all in the house Say it's me, I'm looking for... Miracle. Miracle. Somebody in here is sick. I need to prophesy in the room 
Miracle is coming your way. Miracle is somebody in here is depressed. Lay hands on yourself and say, Miracle is coming my way. Woo. Yeah, he's working a miracle. How did you make it to this moment is because you are a survivor. Listen, Pastor, I didn't come so much to preach as I did to encourage people to not allow the experiences to erase your expectation. Y'all got it? Don't allow life experiences to erase your expectation. God is in the miracle working business. You know how I know? Because I'm a survivor. Everything that's come my way, God has navigated me through everything that's come my way. See, I'm, I'm done, but let me say this. I'm, I'm struggling with one little part of this text. Miss Matilda, it says that when they got there, that there was a stone that had been there, Daryl, and there was a signet, it means that it's sealed on the stone there. And there were soldiers there. I'm, I'm struggling because I'm trying to figure out why do you need why do you need soldiers if the man is dead? Why do Tamika, why do you need soldiers for a dead man? God gave me the revelation. He says the reason they had soldiers there was because I had a record that I was a repeated offender of raising stuff from the dead. God says they were scared because they saw me go to Jay Aris's house and raise his daughter from the dead. They saw me go to the woman at the, at the city of Nain on her way to the cemetery. I touched the beer and I raised that boy from the dead. They, they, they saw me time and time again when dead stuff was dead. I lay my hands on it and I, so, so they had to put somebody in front of it to make sure that I didn't raise it from the dead. Excuse me, I, I, I can't preach this, but I need somebody to receive it. You better get ready because the repeated offender told me to tell you that the enemy is mad because he got his hand on your situation and what they thought was dead and was over is getting ready to come back to life. Who am I preaching to in the room? Somebody holler, I'm a survivor. The enemy thought you were finished. The enemy thought it was over. The enemy thought you were dead. Somebody holler, I'm still here. He's about to raise your situation up. Everybody else has counted you out, but just getting ready to come back to life. Do you receive it? Do you receive it? You must declare, I am a survivor. Even if it look bad right now, say it out of your mouth. With your mask on, make the enemy mad and declare, I am a survivor. Woo. Oh, I feel God messing with somebody. I caught God this morning with his hand on my son. I caught God this morning with his hand on my wife. I caught God.
God this morning with his hand on my life. Anybody in here know he's a repeat offender? Take your ashes to ashes and dust the dust somewhere else because I'm alive. Come on. You not dead. It ain't over. I said you're not dead. It ain't over. Make the devil know I shall live and not die. Woo! You ain't gonna kill my body. You ain't gonna kill my spirit. You ain't gonna kill my emotions. You're not gonna kill my mind. I will live. It looks bad, but this too shall pass. I'm a survivor. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. If he brought you through and brought you out, come on and worship him. Hey, hey. Hey. You gonna live, you gonna survive, you gonna get back up. I know we gotta go, but I feel God in this house. I feel God moving on your road. Some stuff is happening in your family. You standing in the gap for your children. You standing in the gap for your mama and your daddy. Come on somebody, your hands lifted is gonna bless somebody at your house. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holy Ghost move throughout the house. I plead the blood over every dead situation. Hi, my, my son. I plead the blood. Yeah. Yeah. Plead the blood over greater joy. Plead the blood over it. So when the angel comes through, trying to wipe us out he gonna have to pass by cause there's blood on the doorpost plead the blood over Pastor Artez and First Lady Kim's house the blood deaf angel gotta pass over amen if he can get the leader he can get the rest of them plead the blood over Elder Howard's life. Are y'all with me in here? I plead the blood over every deacon, every trustee, every leader, every laity. Hallelujah. Lay hands on, your, on yourself and say, blood on my house. The enemy is mad because he can't get to you. Because there's blood over your house. Yeah. You're going to survive this situation. And you're going to survive it. That's all I came to share today by way of my little Easter story. I want you to see there got to be passion. You got to press. They've got to be providential proof. And that proof is in how we behave if we've been delivered. I'm tired of dead church. With folk who declare that God's been good. And then they still won't lift their voices and open their mouth. If he's delivered you, there has to be a sign. Amen. Her devotion was her sign. 
that God had delivered her. And whenever he's worked through your life, make sure you show some signs. Come on, preachers. I'm two minutes over. I'm out of getting out of the way. Anybody receive that you are a survivor? Anybody receive that this is going to pass? Come on, say it out of your mouth. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Can I deputize everybody in the room to look at one person and tell them you're going to make it? Point at them and tell them you're going to survive it. Come on, tell them. You got to tell them with some enthusiasm. If you ain't got no enthusiasm, they don't believe they're going to make it. I said, look at your doggone neighbor and tell them you will survive it. Gonna survive. You gonna survive. You gonna survive it. You gonna survive it. Matilda is an example. You can survive it. Amen. She can survive it. Others in the room that have made it through it, you are examples. Yeah, you know what? You need him to survive. Need God to make it. I don't know where I'd be if God hadn't stepped in and brought me through everything. Amen? Let me open the doors of the church. Yeah. Let me open the doors of the church. If you're here and you need a church family, come on. Today is the day for you to say yes. I'm a, I'm a witness that if you put it in his hand, he'll bring you through whatever issue you're faced with. If you're in the house and you need him, you strayed away and you need to get back, today is a good day. Come on. Come on. Let me introduce you to my God who will take you through anything. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. And in case you get confused about the fact that you just need God. No, no, no. There's a song. There's a song, Sister Kathy, that we, we would say, we say, all I need All I need was Jesus. No. That ain't all you need. You need the people in your life to survive. Amen? You need some folk to help you. You wouldn't have made it without support and help. You need somebody. Can you say this for me while we, before we pray? Tell somebody, I need you to survive. Yeah, I need you. I need you and you need me if we're going to make it through this. So I need you to pray for me and I'm going to pray for you and we're going to make it through this. Is that all right? Let's pray together. Father, thank you now for an opportunity for your people to come together. Thank you for your rich word. Showing us, first of all, we got to show up. Second of all, when we get there, we got to expect miracles. And then, God, when we expect miracles, we got to leave there knowing that the providential hand of God is working out all things. Somebody in the room is struggling in their mind. Somebody in here is struggling, God, with their finance. Somebody is struggling with their health. Somebody is struggling with this or that, but whatever the struggle, I decree and declare right now, God, that you will help them to survive. Whoever is suffering from domestic violence right now, I speak over their lives, declaring that they are great and, and their life is great. I, I declare over them right now, God, that they are more than conquer us. Oh, I declare and decree over their lives, God, that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. God, have 
your way. And if you do it, I'll praise you. Ask God that you would continue to bless this church and whatever is needed for this house. Send your anointing. Make preaching and praising and serving easy. And we'll give your name glory. This is our prayer now. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And amen. Tell somebody you're going to survive. You're going to survive it. Hallelujah. Make sure y'all go outside and take the kids outside and enjoy the festivities. <laughs>